Welcome to this video. This is Said Ahmed from Toronto, Canada. So this video, it will be on domain specific language. So I'll just try some topics on domain specific uh, language. Let me see what I can uh, try, right? So first of all, this is the first video in relation to domain specific language. Just a random thing. So what is domain specific language, right? Domain specific language, in general, you can consider CSS a domain specific language, HTML a domain specific language, or it can even happen that uh, there can have some conference application, right? Conference uh, scheduling or conference related stuff creation applications. That means whoever wants to create uh, a conference, they can take this software and they can uh, configure it to create their own uh, conference, right? And, and and all, all the different output can be there. I, 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 it may work like a language. Sometimes it may look like it's a software, just a configuration for different conference, uh, different conference, and then uh, you're generating, right? Yeah, it has a flavor depending on the DSL, right? But it's not always an application like HTML or with CSS or probably some other libraries, they feel like part of programming language or, or in addition. But if I talk about a conference creation application, that's a DSL, it may feel like it's just an application. You just configure it for different and it gives outputs. But I think, uh, but it's little more than that. I think using it, you can also sort of create some sort of programming, sort of do some sort of programming or probably sometimes write some uh, text, uh, textual language type. You can define it, define your own syntax. I think whoever is creating this conference, you can, they can give their own syntax. It does not have to be that C++ or Java syntax, but they can define their own syntax, own symbols, own editors, where they can uh, write the, in a particular way, so that it, 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 will, it, it will give a, uh, all the elements of a conference, right? Just a conference DSL is a programming language that can only do conference, that can only uh, write software for conference management committee to whatever is required for that conference, uh, to organize a conference, right? Probably it can it can let you um, think speaker object or this object, that object related to conference or probably track, room, speaker, or time, topics. Yeah, I think you can, uh, the, the, let's say the programming editor, the conference language, conference DSL, the programming editor, right? Here, you can write something like a programming language, but whatever is required for the particular conference. So all the elements will be there, or probably it, it will have some sort of graphical interface, right? Just like you in Visual Basic or in Visual C++, you have some different components, you put them, drag them, right? And then they do something, they write some code. When you put them, the background, they write some code, right? But then you add some more code, right? So you can also think in conference uh, creation DSL, you can put uh, different components and they mean something, you organize them in such a way uh, so that uh, when you execute it, it will just uh, uh, do some output that that indicates one particular conference organization. Okay. Well, probably as a developer, when you put different things on the uh, on the uh, on the interface, and then you might be able to write some specific code behind those, just the way you do it, Visual Basic or or C Sharp, uh, Visual Studio, right? That sort of thing, but it will be focused only to create conference. That's the conference DSL, right? Okay. Okay, there's DSL. So uh, 
I I will be creating a little bit, but I'm not telling the application name that I am uh, putting some effort to, to create into, but that's a very particular purpose in data analytics project development area. So that's a different thing. Okay, the goal of this video is, uh, yes, uh, I think just sort of brainstorming, brainstorming of the different ideas in relation to domain specific languages. And so that I, it, 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 I think while discussing, I get or take some clues or think about some clues so that I can, uh, I can take those ideas and implement it for this, okay. So the goal is different ideas, brainstorm, try different concepts. Uh, in general, try some examples from the internet or try to make use of the different tools available in the domain specific language. And using this practice and in my in my mind, think about how I can use this uh, for the application that I am trying to develop or, or put putting efforts into, right? So that this, this thing can uh, go there, okay. Let's see, so what is the tool that I will be primarily using? Okay, let's uh, share the screen. Okay, let me see, let me, uh, I'm just, uh, we'll be using Eclipse development platform, right? Eclipse uh, has its own. I think the concept is there are some different, some related concept that you need to know. EMF, right? EMF, E core, epsilon, those are related. Okay. EMF Eclipse modeling framework. Using it, you will be creating the domain specific uh, language, right? Okay, let's now share the screen. Okay, so uh, this is the Eclipse ep Epsilon. Okay, and you can actually develop into the Eclipse itself, right? In the, just the main Eclipse, Ec Epsilon, you'll be able to download it for from Eclipse uh, website. So it is specifically different components are putting together so that you can uh, develop a domain specific language. And domain specific language, it actually uses some sort of uh, uh, domain-driven development, okay, MDD, model-driven development, model-driven. Uh, okay, let's not forget about the domain-driven development. It's model-driven development, model-driven development. So Eclipse helps you the features for the model-driven development and to create DSL, I think DSL domain-specific language in the back, we can use the model-driven development, right? So Eclipse platform. You will see there are some some stuff in the Python as well, and I also came across some some stuff in the Microsoft Visual Studio. Microsoft Visual Studio, it also has its own tools, own SDKs, so that where you can you'll be able to create some sort of a domain specific language. So, for for my thing, I'm I'm going into the uh, Eclipse. I think it probably, as far as I understand or saw, uh, it is. It might be used more than the others so far, but others, uh, okay. I probably cannot give a uh, complete conclusion. Okay. Let's say, what can you do? What are the different, uh, different aspects? Let's say you want to create a project, right? So there are a couple of things that are related to this. So let's Eclipse modeling framework, EMF, Ecore model, EMF, EMF pro project, 
MTMF projects, mapping. Okay, these are several things. Okay, let's see if they have any EMF epsilon project or not. Okay, it's not there. And you will need it. GMF. You will need it. It does not mean it's a must, right? Graphical modeling framework. What, what, it, what does it do? It creates the user interface for the developer. So that will be using your DO domain specific language for a particular purpose, right? The graphical user interface. It, it helps with this. And Eclipse modeling framework, that's the modeling that we use. And there are other things like Xtext. Xtext, you can use uh, text-based text -based editor. Text-based editor and programming editor for your domain specific language, like specific words, specific syntax, specific rules. So those things thing. We also have OCL. Uh, constraints, some sort of uh, constraint, I guess. I think in your core model or all those things or whatever I, I told you before, I think you can integrate these constraints rules uh, there. Okay. Now, what will be my goal, right? For this okay, example, EMF model creation wizards. Okay, EM fatigue. Okay, there are some other concepts that you need to know. One thing is the meta model, another thing is the model. Okay, uh, because this lecture is not really structured that way, so as I told, it can be a little bit of, it may feel like a little bit of, of uh, random, right? So our goal was a DSL, domain specific language creation that uses model driven development, model driven engineering in the back, right? Now, there are, model is one thing, and there is another concept, meta model. What does meta model means? Meta data means some information about data, right? Meta model means information sub model. Now, in your domain specific language, in your domain specific language, what you'll do? You'll be having many different models. Many different models, sort of, I will not say they, they, they directly related to some object, probably no, but just for the time we see it like this, and then some information of that, uh, some abstract of that model, that is the meta model, right? You can consider model as an abstraction, as an instantiation of meta model, right? Model is an instance of meta model, right? So let's see if you, if you want to create a uh, software or language, right? Some domain specific language, I are, let's say music concerts can be, music concerts can be arranged or whatever a music conference related, whatever uh, thing they need, banner, schedule, advertisement, flyer, whatever you need. I think the purpose will be whoever wants to organize a music concert. They can use the software and they can write some uh, uh, programming like syntax to create all the different things that they need or probably some graphical user interface, right? So in that case, what can be a meta model? Let's see, one of the concept is the musicians, right? Musicians, if there is only one music, musician, just one music musician, then probably a model of musician is good, right? But uh, musicians can vary in concept, right? Uh, musicians can have different characteristics in terms of how they look, what they wear, how they play, what are the instrument. So, you'll be creating different meta models that uh, can give some information about the model. Let's see, model is the musician. Uh, the different aspects of this model, different aspects of this model, we can define it in meta model. Now, if I want to create a particular, particular musician, what I can do? I can create some instances or link them somehow to create this uh, uh, model, right? Model, probably uh, someone plays some instrument, use it, attach it to some particular musician, or probably in terms of how he performs, 
how he or she performs, whether he or she lifts her foot or not. So different different model, different musician, different characteristics, those will be coming from the uh, meta model, right? So we define some meta model, and then from the meta model, we get the model. And then DSL, this model driven development, we create model. So DSL will be using those models for those for that. I believe when we'll be working on the uh, UI editor for programming languages. If, if you create this domain specific language, a programming language, a programming tools, then the developers will work with, uh, they primarily will work on those models, those instances and then models. But you will need to define some sort of meta model in your, uh, when you're developing DSL. Now, because your models can vary, if you just have only one kind of model, then you don't need DSL, uh, sorry, meta model. But if you, are, if you are to give variations in the models, then yes, you will need meta models, right? So uh, when we create this DSL, one of the first step can be, yes, definitely all this planning and designing is there. So let's say first is the meta model, right? First is the meta model that we need to define, right? So creating meta model. Now, meta model, uh, as far as I know, they have three different things. One thing is the abstract syntax, another thing is the concrete syntax, and another thing is the semantic. Semantic thing, three different things that you need to uh, define, right? So the reason I brought this up because the first step will be creating some meta model. Okay, for creating the DSLs, I think when you go to implement it, yes, after designing, uh, it might be the case that you will be creating meta model as a first step, right? So to create model, meta model, or all those things, we have some tools like uh, ecore, ecore emphatic, right? Ecore emphatic. Those can be used to create this meta model. Okay, after we create meta model, then we can instance some model out of that. After we create this model, then we can create some graphical editor where those models can be used. Right? Okay. As I go through, I'll bring more topics. And in future, it might be the case, I can just show you step-by-step development, right? At this moment, let's see. Uh, I'm just putting thoughts into it, just brainstorming of the idea so that I can use it myself. Okay, I'm just putting thoughts. I think which one I start with. Okay, let's say there is something bowling model that comes as part of the examples. Let's see examples. Okay, what I told you, see, it's not here. It's just uh, capabilities. Okay, let's not go there. Let me see if I, if I can find out that example and then I will uh, go from there. 